Okay, Atomic Skanatoni, good morning. It is about 0630 hours on the solstice, June 21st, 2018, in the lunar cycle Misamsota. And my day is already rolling. Headed to a client's house uh, where there is a skunk in one of my traps. So I'm going to take and release that skunk. And then uh, go get Mahoney and Bell and bring them to school and work and get the day rolling. Did, uh, I think it's going to be warm today. Chances are there's going to be a lot of you know, critter activity, but we'll see how things go. Hey there, skunky. Now, time for you to move. Oh, a little bit stinky, but not too bad. You bet. little dude. Alright buddy. Hope you find a good place to go. Check out those coolies. There you go. Alright, back at home now brought everybody out to work and school and such and um, been tended to these you know new birds that have come in and I think this the pigeon um, fledgling might be okay I was feeding her earlier uh, she seems to have a lot more energy than yesterday and I'm thinking she might be okay to uh, to take off so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a test here on that idea <laughs> and see if see if she's interested in coming out and flying the coop so to speak you ready Come out. Let's see. Come on. Come on. You're okay. You're okay. There you go. There you go. Now the real test will be to see if she flies off. She's just going to go find some place to hide, you know? There we go. <laughs> That's what I like to see. <laughs> she's landed on the side of the roof and she's having issues, but... I think she's going to be all right. <laughs> I 
don't want to rush her or anything, you know. So maybe best I even just leave her alone. Maybe take a take a look outside and. 20, 30 minutes. See if she's around. I think she'll be all right. She just needed, I bet she just got bumped, you know, got bumped on that road and needed to rest up. I mean, a good night's rest is pretty good medicine for a little concussion. Okay, so now I'm thinking I was a little bit premature <laughs> in the release of the dove because the dove has not departed. She's sitting up there where she's been for the last 20 to 30 minutes since we left her. And I did bring a net out here to see if I could retrieve her. But I have a suspicion she's not going to allow that. So she's she's good enough that she's going to avoid capture again. But she's not really good enough to be trying to find her way out here. She's just kind of sitting still. She flew toward the house, all right, <laughs> and right on top of it. All right, so at this point, my strategy is going to be uh, just to wait to see where she goes next, see if she comes down from on top of the house in the next hour or two or what have you. She doesn't want to be on top of the house, I don't think, but that's where her wings have taken her. Maybe she's going to try something else here. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, because there's birds of prey up there. I saw one. I'm over here. She doesn't think she can fly down. Let's see. Oh, there she goes. All right, so that's a pretty decent flight. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I've got a chance of catching her, so she's at least that good, and all we can do is hope for the best. Okay, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon now, and me and Belle are at the cemetery. So we're gonna go see if we can find the marmot and catch him. I call him Mr. Squirrel. Yeah, let's go see if we can find Mr. Squirrel. You gotta be camera girl. Yeah. <laughs> What's a catch pole? <laughs> so a catch pole no. is a special uh, tool for working with animals where you basically put a loop around their neck or body um, and you pull it tight. You don't like hurt them, but you pull it tight so they can't get off of it and that and they're far enough away from you that you don't get bit, right? Yeah. You can see the end of this gets all bit. Now, dealing with squirrels, let me tell you, when I was a kid, I climbed out onto a uh, branch of a walnut tree after a gray squirrel, and I, I made him, I cornered him, 
and he was scared and then he like leapt at me like, yeah, he like come running at me bit me <laughs> yeah bit me jumped over me escaped so and it wasn't fun to get bit by a squirrel so this is like the biggest squirrel in North America this marmot and uh, I'm gonna not get bit right mm. <laughs> And the reason why we're trying to catch him is because he's eating all the flowers in the graveyards. Eating all the flowers. Flower eater. Yeah. He likes flowers. He's a flower squirrel. <laughs> he doesn't go in it. See him between these two. You know what these are? No. These concrete boxes. What are these? That is what they put in the ground before they put the coffin in. And then the coffin goes into the concrete box. And then the concrete lid goes onto the concrete box. So like uh, to keep the dirt from uh, from the coffin. Yeah. They think that our bodies are biohazards and they shouldn't, uh, <laughs> some people think that they're going to rise from the grave one day. <laughs> some people. Uh, of course he's not going to be here when we came to try to grab him, hey? Yeah, of course. He'd be up in the trees. He could be underneath the, because he goes underneath that shack or underneath that house. Well, no luck with the marmot, but that's kind of typical, you know, as soon as I come with a catch pole, no marmot in sight. <laughs> that's all right. That story will be to be continued, and I don't mind. One of these days now, me and that marmot are, are going head to head. <laughs> um, it looks like we're getting the weather system coming in. So we might get some rain, some kind of thunder showers and stuff. So it might be the end of my critter calls for the evening. We'll see. But I thought at the very least I'd give you an update on the baby crow that I picked up yesterday. You saw the dove went free this morning. Um, baby crow is not in a position to go free like ever. So I don't think anyway. We'll see. We'll see. The, the, the full judgment's out on that one. But... Um, baby crow is the one closest to us here and then the one that you see by the couch there fidgeting around um, that's Oscar that's one of my pet crows and this is his area hey Oscar's area is defined by this rug in my living room and Oscar has a deformity um, he's permanently disabled can't fly and uh, because his body's a little bit disfigured and his legs are seriously disfigured so he walks on his elbows and he's built big pads on the elbows. Um, over time, they're big uh, swollen pads and they may become a problem at some date. I don't know. Uh, he's also, he needs a bath. <laughs> Just one of the big issues with these guys with deformities is that they live in filth a lot. You know, it's, it's hard to keep up with them. Um, and keep them clean. So Oscar's in need of a bath right now, as a matter of fact. If you saw underneath his tail feathers, he's, he's kind of caked with stuff. Um, baby here is actually from the same parents, I believe, as Oscar. Oscar's just a few generations back, so they're siblings, and it's kind of cool that they get to hang out here together. I'm looking for a parent, an alloparent for baby because Baby, I believe, has the same deformity, at least with one leg. His left leg, um, his foot's twisted, so he walks on the side of his foot. And he does, you know, he does try to stand up. Like his right leg, it seems like he's, he's got a, maybe has a good leg. And so there's a possibility um, that this little guy is going to be able to fly and stuff. 
I don't know whether his body's deformed in that, in that like Oscar yet, but but I, you know, the likelihood is he's going to need a long-term home just like Oscar, and um, these are the kind of cases that that get euthanized even in the even in the nicest of uh, rehab centers. Anyway, it sounds like I got a visitor, so that's the update on the crows, and um, might be it for the night. Well, the weather never came for me, but a snake did. I'm headed right down to Lethbridge Country Club. It's about half past 1900 hours in the evening. And I'm curious if this is the same snake I picked up like a couple of days ago down here. If so, I've, I've kind of learned from this predicament, this particular location, they sometimes get snakes from across the river, from uh, Riv Riverstone area. So I might hey, Riverstone slash University. It's really close. Anyway, we're gonna see who the snake is down here. If I recognize it from the other day, probably I'm gonna take it across the river and see if that helps. Yeah, I couldn't even see her in here. So it blends in pretty good in that little. Yeah, she does. I was. I was checking right before I came down here. I kind of looked in my uh, database to see what the snake looked like the other day that I picked up here. Yeah. So this is not the same snake. No, it's a little, little different. Yeah. Yeah, smaller, a little bit younger female snake. Different, different patterns on the back. Uh, I'll start documenting it myself, you know, every time I grab one, just take a little sketch back. I have all today, too, that we had one on 15. I went out there, Ryan, I couldn't find them. No? But there was, they said it was a good size one. Like the, Maybe they called that was in. the one from the other day. Yeah, they said it was yeah, a Yeah, the, the one from the other day size. was a fairly decent size. When they, when, they, uh, when they happen down here, I never know if they're actually from here or if they've come over across the river. Across the river. You know? yeah. So my first, my first thing is I, I put them up by the... Uh, like behind the cemetery, hey? Okay, yeah. Because I I think there might be a small den at the scenic heights area. Okay, yeah. Um and so I'm I'm supposed to bring them to the nearest known one. But last year we had that one that, that returned like four times. Yeah. Then just I kept coming out. Yeah, I brought him to the other side of the river and then that was it. I think he was just he was he was from Riverstone or something. Oh, he was he trying to get back. Trying to make way. Yeah. Hello. Hey there, I have a fellow named Scott Fabro. He's got a rattler. He's found in Riverstone. Oh, okay. Sure, put him through. Okay. Here you go, Ryan. I'll help you out here, sir. Sure, thanks. Hello. How you doing? Hey. You're, you're, uh, you're Scott? Yeah, yeah, there's a rattler over here at uh, Riverstone. It was on the road there, and uh, I just put him over in the grass for now. But uh, he's, not a, he's not a big one, right? Okay. Somebody should probably get him, just, uh, right? Yeah, I'll come take him away. What's your address there? Okay, this is a young male snake. Again, from the Scenic Heights area. Surprise! Getting a few calls from here this year. This is not the same snake as I picked up from the country club the other day. Whole different specimen. I don't like that word, specimen. Whole different uh, snake poo. Hey, buddy. Let him go on his way, and we have another snake call out at Riverstone to go to. Do you want to see it? No. Oh I'm my god. Absolutely gosh. terrified of snakes. Like, how do you do this? For, I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> snakes terrify me. So yeah, so we were like. My mom was riding her bike and it was like coiled up on the ground and she didn't see it and she drove by. Yeah. But, like jumped out at her basically. Jumped so out at her. I got it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It kind of like slithered at her. Stick. It probably it probably got scared because it saw her and it yeah. like coiled yeah. up because yeah. it saw her. And then he um went into the grass, so we put him in this bucket because we didn't want to lose him. Yeah. We wanted him to, you know. Well there's a guy with a couple little dogs walking too. I didn't want him to just Oh yeah. No, like, better, are you better take it out of the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, this all goes on. We have a Lethbridge, uh, no, this way. Rattlesnakes of Lethbridge Facebook page. Okay, okay, okay. Over there, report.
bad. He's not too bad. Pretty crazy. They're building along this ridge, not far. Look at the houses right there. And they can they're gonna continue that line. And this land is just slipping off. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna dig up the photos or not, but like two years ago, this gap was like two inches. And it's like a five foot gap now. And it's deep, you know, like don't judge it by where that dirt is laid right there, 10 feet down or whatever. That's nothing. It goes way deeper. This is a big, big chasm. And it's it's going to break off into a, uh, at some point here, quite a cliffside, I believe. Look at this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this goes deep, 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 deep. 50 feet, maybe more, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know, like, I talked to the, uh, some of the, some of the lead managers on this project um, that are building these residences, not only for attempting to put in snake control, which is botched up here but about this eroding landscape and they said their uh, <laughs> their engineers came to check it out it was pretty stable yeah this is the growth in like two years that's stable anyway <laughs> let's release our snakey poo here young male he's ready to come out I got to go Oh, I did take a picture of him, so I don't need to do that. Let's just, let's just take him out. Whoa. He's a pretty calm snake. He could be way, way more stressed out than he is, but he's pretty calm. You're okay. You're okay. All right, buddy. We will drop you off in this hole over here. Someplace to hang out for the night. I don't know if I've seen you before, but we'll check it out. 